<laughs> so today I made pecan pie. Yeah, an old-fashioned recipe from the 50s. This book has been passed down for three generations now in my family, so I'm excited for you to try it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, good crust. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Healthy. Healthy because pecans. fall time and we've already done a pumpkin recipe, I wanted to do something that was a little bit traditional to Thanksgiving and we're gonna make classic pecan pie. This recipe is from the 50s from a cookbook that has been passed down in my family. So this is something that is really near and dear to me and it's super simple to make. So now that our dough has been resting for 30 minutes, I also realized I didn't explain why we put it back in the fridge for 30 minutes. Um, basically when we were kneading our dough to have it come together, like I had mentioned previously, our hands warm up the dough. So we were warming up the butter in that process. So I popped the dough back in the fridge for 30 minutes just so that our butter could get cold again. So that way we retain our flaky structure that we're looking for. But what I like to do when I'm rolling is do a crisscross pattern. So I'll go up in one direction, down in the opposite direction, down the way that we went up first and then back again. We'll flip the dough. We'll try to retain the round disc shape while we're doing this at the same time. Um, why we put it in a round disc form is because our pie pan is also round too. So it's just gonna make it easier. It's gonna retain the same shape when we're cutting our dough. So we're gonna go back and forth. Just remember crisscross patterns. We just have a lightly floured bench. If you even take a look at the dough right now, you can still see that there's little chunks of butter. This is great. This is exactly what we're looking for. When we're baking the pie crust, those butter pieces are eventually gonna melt out and that's gonna create a little pocket for your pie crust, which will result in your flaky dough. Again, I'm lightly flouring my bench. Like I had mentioned, we don't wanna add too much flour to this recipe. Now, since we're only using half of the pie dough recipe, this will be a little bit of a thinner crust. A little trick that I like to do is you take the pan and you place it on top. And if it covers most of the outer edge, you're good. We do have a little bit of spots where there's extra. So this is where you can go ahead cut away some extra, do your little whole patches right now, fill it in. When we create our edge for our pie, we'll make this look all pretty and fancy, so. Now you might be thinking, okay, Amanda, you've been talking about keeping this cold and you've been working with this dough for quite a while now. I totally understand that. Um, actually, once we roll it back into the pan, we're gonna stick it back in the fridge to make our filling. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut around the edges of your pie pan. Keep these little bits handy. You might need to use them to cover up any patches that we might have when we put it back in the pie pan. Or you can also use it for decoration. So we are in the fall season. If you wanna do a little leaf cutouts or anything like that, you totally can save that pie crust. An easy way to put your pie dough over your pie pan is take your rolling pin and simply roll it across You'll bring your pie pin back and you will simply just lay it over. A common way to flute a pie if you want to is you take your two knuckles and you put your index finger and you simply just make little flutes like that, which is what I will do. If you do cut and there's a little bit of extra, another tip that you can do is press a fork into it and that gives you the little ripple effect in your pie crust. Um, so I'm gonna continue to do the fluting and then after I'm done with this, I'm gonna stick it back in the fridge for about 15 minutes. Um, right before we put it back into the fridge, I'm just gonna take a fork and I'm gonna poke around at the bottom. We're gonna put this in the fridge and now we're gonna let this sit for 15 minutes. So for the pecan pie filling, you'll need one fourth cup of unsalted butter at room temperature, two thirds cup of brown sugar, firmly packed, 
I actually use dark brown sugar rather than light brown sugar. I feel like it gives it more of like an earthy, more molasses-y type of flavor, um, but you can switch between light and dark brown sugar. I use 1 4th teaspoon of salt, 3 4 cup of dark corn syrup, 3 eggs that are beaten and also at room temperature, 1 teaspoon of vanilla. We will use half of the recipe of the pastry dough that we talked about earlier and then one cup of pecan halves. I've tried this recipe toasting my pecans first. I actually prefer not toasting the pecans with this recipe. We're gonna start with the creaming method. I'm gonna do a little back step. When we make our pie dough and we make our pastry, we want everything cold. When we're making our filling, we want things to be set at room temperature. So last episode, I talked about the creaming method where we just take butter and sugar and we whip that for two to three minutes. We're gonna be doing the same step here. We're gonna take 1 4th cup of unsalted butter with 2 thirds cup of brown sugar. I actually put the salt in the brown sugar too. So I'm gonna put that in the mixer and then get that going on a medium speed. Again, I'm gonna start the butter just to make sure it's going a little bit and then I'm gonna slowly start adding in the brown sugar. Brown sugar is more clumpy than granulated sugar so it'll come out in clumps and not a steady stream. So when we're creaming it, it's not gonna look super fluffy just because we have more sugar versus fat. It will look fluffy, it will change texture. It's just gonna be a lighter brown color, like a pale brown color, what we're looking for. So I'm gonna give this a go. I'll stop it in a second, I'll scrape the bowl, and then I'll put it on medium high for two minutes. So right now it kind of looks like wet sand. Um, don't worry, it'll change textures. Let it rip. So our butter and sugar is about ready to start adding in our eggs. If you want to come and take a look to see what the texture has turned into, the color is a lot more pale. It really looks like a paste. We're going to slowly add our eggs that have been beaten. We have three eggs that are beaten, so I'm going to start this on low. The original recipe tells you after this stage to just add all of the ingredients like your corn syrup and your vanilla together all at once. I've tried that and it just looked a little bit broken and I had to mix this a little bit longer and I just, I didn't like the texture. So I'm gonna add the eggs now, make sure that this mixture is completely combined and then I'll add the corn syrup and the vanilla. All of our eggs have been added. I'm gonna stop the mixer. I'm gonna scrape down the bowl, a big fan of scraping down the bowl. Um, I'm gonna let it go for a little bit longer and then we'll add the corn syrup and the vanilla. You can tell that the butter, sugar, and eggs haven't come together completely. Again, we have higher sugar content in this mixture, so it's more of a paste, and we have a lot of eggs in here. So this is why I feel like the step of adding the eggs and mixing it separately is really important, just to make sure that we're getting this all incorporated together. What we're doing here too is we're avoiding chunks of butter and sugar to be together. So. If you have chunks of butter in a creamy method and you bake it in the pie, that's where you can get like explosions and like little hot spots is what I call them in a pie. So that's why I wanna make sure that this is completely mixed. So we'll take a look. Now it looks more like soup, except this little part right here. So we'll scrape that down. Make sure that we're scraping the bottom of the bowl. But now this looks like a filling, it looks more soup-like texture. I'm gonna start the mixer on low and slowly add the corn syrup in. One thing I wanna to mention too that is a common mistake with baking, people measure wet ingredients not in a liquid measuring cup, they use dry measuring cups. And people say, well, what's the difference? It's the same amount. Which technically, that's not true. Why we use a liquid measuring cup is liquid, when you measure it, has a thing called a meniscus. So if you remember back in elementary school, when you measure liquid, there's a slight curve to the liquid. So when we're putting it in the liquid measuring cup, that's accounting for the meniscus. And basically what you wanna do when you're measuring it is look at the bottom slope of the curve, and that's how you know you're gonna get the most accurate measurements. When you're doing this in a dry measuring cup, 
it's level and that's not accurate to what liquid is. So you're actually gonna be under measuring when you're doing it in a dry measuring cup. So we're gonna let this go medium speed just until it's incorporated. This takes about 10 seconds, really. And we're done. I don't know, Carl, if you wanna come and smell this. I wish we had smell-o-vision. So that's what we're going for. And then if you just wanna do a quick little fold to make sure that you're mixing in all the syrup, you can see some got stuck to the bottom. You don't really have to worry about over mixing on this stage, but just a couple of folds just to make sure that everything is incorporated. This is the filling. I'm gonna go back, grab my cooled pie crust. We're gonna put the pecans in, put the filling, and then we'll go into the oven. So our pie crust has been sitting in the fridge for an additional 15 minutes after we formed it. Our filling is ready to go, so I'm gonna take this out of the fridge, and then we're gonna assemble our pie. We're gonna take a cup of pecans. In the pie crust, we're just gonna layer it on the bottom. Make sure that the pecans are just even. There, you can even feel the little sides, they're all hard, so this is good. It's gonna hold its shape when we're baking. And next, you're just gonna pour the filling mixture all the way on top. This smells delicious. So we're just scraping out as much of the filling as possible. It is gooey. I'm just gonna gently pat, move this around a little bit to make sure that it's covering. Um, some people have said that if you let this rest a little bit, the pecans will float up to the surface. You can also tap the pie. It'll release some of the air bubbles and you'll start to notice that some of the pecans are already lifting up. Now, we're gonna put this in the oven. I'm not gonna do an egg wash. This is already very light and it's hard. Um, I've tried it with an egg wash. It just burns a little bit faster, I've noticed. So I just keep the pie crust plain. So in the oven, before I put it in, I just wanna talk about how I have this set up. I have two wire racks in the oven. I'm gonna place a blank baking sheet on the bottom rack. Now what this is doing is it's serving two purposes. It's gonna be a protective layer in case any of that pie filling bubbles over, which it shouldn't. And also you're creating a barrier with the heat. So it, you're gonna have a less likelihood of your pie crust burning when you're adding in the sheet of metal. Our oven is set to 450. We're gonna start the pie for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we're gonna turn the oven down to 350 and we'll cook this for an additional 35 minutes. So in she goes, it's a bake party for our pecan pie. Our 10 minutes is up, so I'm gonna turn the oven down to 350 and then we're gonna have this go for an additional 35 minutes. There we go. One thing with the coming clean off the knife, there's a lot of butter and there's a lot of fat from the nut in here. So you might see the knife being greasy. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not done. What we're talking about is if any of the butter and sugar mixture is being left on your knife. Let's safely take it out. So there's a little bit of a wiggle in it. But pretty sure. You can see the butter kind of mixture that I was talking about. That's okay. We just want to make sure we're not getting chunks of this mixture coming out. And we're gonna put this on a wire rack and we're gonna let it sit at room temperature for about two hours before we cut into the pie. 